In my previous video, I explained CQRS pattern, multiple ways CQRS can be implemented and the concept of event sourcing, which can be a valuable companion to CQRS helping to solve some of the challenges we face with asynchronous messaging. Today, we are going to dive deeper into event sourcing, what it is, how it works and why it's a game changer for managing complex business logic and data in distributed systems. Event sourcing is like turning your application's memory into a time machine. It is an architectural pattern where state changes are represented as events stored in an append-only log. Unlike a typical relational database that stores only the current state, event sourcing records every change as an event, preserving history and enabling richer context. So, instead of just remembering the latest state of an object like account balance is $500, we store every action that led to that state as an event. These events are immutable records of every change that has ever occurred, and they are stored in an append-only log. So in a relational database, if you are tracking the balance of a bank account, you just store the current balance. But with event sourcing, every deposit and withdrawal is recorded as an event, and you can always replay those events to see how the balance was reached. It's like having a complete history of every change in your system. But why would we choose to store every event rather than just the final state? First of all, event sourcing gives us a perfect audit trail. You can trace every action taken in the system, who performed it and when. This is invaluable for compliance, debugging and understanding the business flow. Imagine being able to answer questions like why was this order cancelled with complete clarity by simply replaying the events that led to the cancellation. Secondly, event sourcing allows us to rebuild the state of an entity at any point of time. If you need to see what customer account looked like last month, just replay the events up to that date. Thirdly, by separating the events that occur in your system from the models that read them, event sourcing naturally supports CQRS. And we'll see more about it shortly. So imagine an API for sellers managing products on e-commerce site. In a CRUD applications, product changes are directly updated in the database. But with event sourcing, every action like product created or price updated generates an event logged with details like authors and timestamps. And this ensures you never lose historical data. However, storing only events leaves a challenge, determining the current state. This is where sourcing comes in. In the context of event sourcing, the term sourcing refers to deriving the current state from past events rather than directly storing the state. Since the state is not directly stored, hydration is the mechanism that allows you to rebuild the state from the event log. So say you have an e-commerce application that uses event sourcing to manage product pricing. And these are the sequence of events. So when the product was created, price was set to $100, price got updated to $120, the discounts got applied to $110, and the price was updated again, and the price became $115. So in a traditional system, you'd simply query the database to get the current price, which would be stored as $115 only. However, in event sourcing, the current price isn't directly stored. Instead, you only have a log of events. To determine the current price, you must replay all the events from the beginning. So when your application needs to know the current price of this product, it hydrates the product by replaying these events sequentially. You start with an empty product object and keep applying all the events that happen. After hydration, the product object reflects the current state with the price $115. But as the number of events grows, hydration can become slow. So if your product has thousands of events, replaying all of them to get the current state is inefficient. Furthermore, in many systems, queries for the current state are frequent. Constantly hydrating the state from scratch or each query introduces performance bottlenecks. Now, hydration and replay both involve processing events to reconstruct the current state of an entity. But they differ in the context and usage. Hydration is the process of building or reconstructing an entity's current state by applying all relevant events from the event log. The primary goal of hydration is to prepare the current state of an entity, often on demand or during startup so it can be used by the application. For example, when a query is made to get the current price of a product, hydration is triggered to apply all relevant events like product created, price updated, etc. and generate the current product state. A replay refers to processing past events to regenerate the entire state of the system or to redo past operations for specific purposes such as debugging, testing, or auditing. So replay is often used 
when you need to rerun events either to validate changes or to migrate data. For example, after deploying a new version of your application with a different data model, you might need to replay all events from the beginning to generate the current state according to the new model. Sourcing is the overarching concept that ties hydration and replay together. It emphasizes that instead of storing the latest state directly, you source the state from the events. The sourcing process is implemented through hydration and replay depending on your needs. So when you need to serve a query or load the entity during runtime, you hydrate the entity from the event log. And when you need to rebuild the entire state of your system or adjust to a new schema, you replay events from beginning to source the state under new conditions. In event sourcing, snapshots and materialized views play essential roles in optimizing performance and providing quick access to current states derived from event streams. So instead of replaying every event, you can periodically capture the current state as a snapshot. For example, after every 100 events, you could save snapshot of that product state. Then when you need the current state, you only replay events from the last snapshot forward, reducing the overhead. You might also maintain a materialized view of the current state in a separate database. And this view is updated in real time as new events occur, allowing you to query the latest state without replaying events. Snapshots enhance performance on the right side, which is the rebuilding state side, while materialized views improve performance on the read side while serving the queries. And both techniques are essential for making event source systems scalable and efficient. Now, in my previous video, we learned that CQRS or Command Query Responsibility Segregation pattern separates the responsibility of handling commands from queries. The command side or the right model handles all actions that change the state, for example, updating a product price. And the query side or the read model handles all the action that retrieve data, for example, get product details. Event sourcing pattern focuses on storing state changes as the series of events. So instead of storing the current state directly in a database, event sourcing stores every change that happens, be it product created, price updated, etc. Event sourcing stores every change that happens, be it product created, price updated as an event, and the current state is derived by replaying these events. Event sourcing fits naturally with CQRS because it is applicable to both the command side and the query side in a CQRS architecture. So in CQRS, commands don't directly modify the state. They generate events. Event sourcing stores these events, creating a history of all the state changes. For example, the update product price command doesn't directly update the product price. Instead, it generates a price updated event, which is stored in the event log. These events represent the intent behind the commands and are stored in the event store, which is the central component of event sourcing. The query side relies on the event stream to build or update its read models. It listens for relevant events, hydrates the domain objects, and keeps the read model in sync. For example, the query service listens for the price updated event and updates the product's read model in its database. So when a user queries with the product details, it retrieves the current price from the read model. In systems using both CQRS and event sourcing, hydration is usually handled by the query side. The command side generates the events and updates the event log, while the query side hydrates the state from those events to serve read requests. The separation helps keep the system scalable, but it also adds complexity. Now let's tie all together with a scenario where a seller decides to update a product price from $100 to $120. So when the seller decides to update the product price, a command like update product price is sent to the command service. The command service processes the command, validates the business rules and generates price updated event, such as this. The event is stored in the event log or event store. The query site typically subscribes to the event log or listens to the message broker that broadcasts new events. And this is how it detects when a new event like price updated is generated. Upon detecting the event, the query service processes it. For example, it might update the price in the product read model. And when a user queries product details, the query service retrieves the data from the read model, which now reflects the latest price of $120. One final note on event propagation. Event propagation in the context of event sourcing refers to process of distributing or transmitting events to various components or services that needs to react to those events. In a typical event-driven system, the command side usually publishes events to a message broker like Kafka, RabbitMQ, or AWS SNS, and the query side subscribes to these topics or queues to receive events in real time. In some implementations, the query side might directly subscribe to the event store, for example, a event store DB, whenever a new event is appended. The query side is notified and processes it. And if the read model becomes corrupted or need restructuring, 
the query service can rebuild it by replaying all the events from the event store. And since event sourcing retains the complete history, the system can reconstruct the state from scratch by processing each event in order. For example, if the product price changes several times, replaying all these events sequentially would lead to the final state with a price of $140. So basically, the query service updates the read model by listening to new events generated by the command side. It uses these events to maintain the current state in a denormalized query optimized form. In case of corruption or restructuring, the read model can be rebuilt by replaying the event history from the event log. This integration of event sourcing with CQRS allows for a scalable, auditable and resilient architecture.